Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jumma Mubarak to you all. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yadihillahu falamudillala wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika lahu. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek help with Allah and seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, no God, but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is indeed Allah's servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O ye who believe be mindful of Allah be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah رب إشرح لي صدري وارسل لي أمري وأحل الفتن من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Pray that Allah opens up my chest and makes this uh, opportunity and this task easy and loosens the knot of my tongue, that my speech and my words may be understood. And that glory be to you, Allah. We have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. And verily, Allah is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Alhamdulillah, it's grateful. It's a great opportunity again to be with you. Very grateful to be here on Juma uh, at this halfway point of Ramadan. And very much so, like uh, previous years, or maybe even more so, it's probably really felt that this Ramadan has just really flown by. And it's just, you know, there's there's no, you know, kind of like way of kind of grasping like how fast it's kind of gone, but perhaps having it in the time of our work schedules and whatnot has just kind of made it feel like it's going so far uh, and so fast um, versus in the summer when things are a little bit slower. But however it, it has been going for us, inshallah, it's a good opportunity for us that as we're halfway through this climb, this summiting, this ex, ex, this kind of expedition through Ramadan, um, there's no better time than right now to evaluate and assess for ourselves, not only how far we have climbed, but also how far we still have to go. And to also not lose uh, sight of the assessment of how are we doing during this time? How has our fasting been? How has our Ramadan as a whole been um, spiritually, physically, emotionally? How are we doing holistically? And so when we think about this, the space also affords us that aspect to think about when we're at this halfway point, do we feel that we've gotten anything from our fasts other than hunger? Do we feel that we've gotten anything from our prayers other than sleep deprivation or being tired? Do we feel that we've gotten anything but you know, oversatiation or bloatedness uh, from our iftars or anything else? So it's not too late for us to be able to ask these questions, but also be honest with ourselves. And it's not too late for us to reclaim our Ramadan as we continue this expedition, as we continue this climb to the top. It's not too late for us to be able to take back uh, what may feel like something that's not going our way or something that is just, you know, just trudging along and we're just kind of going along with the rhythms of it and maybe not feeling too happy. You know, if our Ramadan has not been going as we had hoped and how it has been, you know, doesn't necessarily have to mean or doesn't necessarily have to define how it can and how it will be if we take heed of this moment. And so Thinking about in comparison, uh, Imam Ali Radulawan had stated that the hereafter is traveling towards us and the present life is traveling away. Um, so be the children of the hereafter and not from the children who are of this world or of the present. For today is action without reckoning and tomorrow is reckoning without action. And similarly for Ramadan, however bad, however, you know, um, you know, negative or however it may have been, whatever that state of Ramadan had been in, in which we are not maybe pleased or not happy or not satisfied with us at that space, it does not necessarily have to define what will be the, the remaining of our Ramadan. It does not have to define us, that maybe we weren't the best versions of ourselves in this previous half of Ramadan. But at halftime now, looking at the rest, 
it can be a completely different ball game. It can be completely different. And instead of what is or has been, it does not have to be indicative of what is most, uh, what is about to come and what is remaining. And taking heed of the fact as well that the blessed part, the most blessed part of Ramadan is still on the horizon. Those last 10 days are still ahead of us there. And we still have some time to be able to turn uh, and change our game plan, as we had talked about, as we think about this kind of halfway point, however you want to conceptualize it. If you are someone who's in hiking, if you are somebody who's involved in sports, there's always some kind of like that half time is always just that halfway point. Well, this is that halfway point where we change our game plan if we need to, to be able to adjust because the part that really, really, really we don't want to miss out on and that we really hope to be able to achieve and to be able to be present for is still ahead of us. And so when we think about the space as well, we think at this time, when we evaluate ourselves, we think, ask ourselves and we tell ourselves that our sins and even our uh, ritual sacrifices aren't those things that reach Allah, but our piety is what reaches Allah. So how can we aim to cultivate piety? How can we aim to cultivate it at this halftime that wherever we might be, whatever we might be doing, wherever on the spectrum we might be, we're at this point, at the least, let's try to cultivate some piety. Let's try to get to a space where we can feel content with that we left Ramadan, when we exited Ramadan, we look back and we feel some kind of a change, some sort of positive change, even if that means we shed a lot of previous shackles that are holding us onto this world, whatever it might be, that we leave Ramadan with an ounce of that piety, with an ounce of that transformation. And how do we, how do we get to that? And so that's what we'll be talking about today. And it comes from this, uh, this, this short narration that was mentioned to, or that was shared of Hassan al-Basri. Um, who would come after the, the Sahaba Tabi. Um, and when he was asked the secret of his piety, Hassan al-Basri had mentioned that I understood four things. I understood one, that my provision, my risk, decreed by Allah, can't be taken by anybody. So my heart became content. I understood that no one can do my actions or my worship for me. So I started to do them myself. I understood that Allah is watching me. So I became ashamed and mindful of that which I was doing wrong. And four, I understood that death is waiting for me. So I started to then prepare for my meeting with Allah. And so how do we change course? How do we summit Ramadan? How do we reclaim Ramadan? Hassan al-Basri shared these things, but it's important to say he wasn't that, oh, I am this, I am this, I am this. He said, I realized this, and then I became that. I realized this, and then I made that adjustment. At some point, he, get, he got to a space where he made that adjustment and it, it reflected uh, in that state. And so how do we reflect in sense? Where is that point for us? And let's make that point for us today. Let's make it right now in sense. What do we do now? And you see in, in Hassan al-Basri's statement that there's remembrance, there's humility, there's mindfulness. So first off, our very first and foremost task in being able to reclaim, to resummit, and to be able to reevaluate our Ramadan for a even more um, successful objective of how far how far we've gone and how far we can continue to go for our destination. Our first step is we remember. We remember Allah. We remember also the purpose of Ramadan. We remember the purpose of why we fast, why we're in this month. In the Quran, Allah reminds us that the month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran, the divine speech, the revelation, the connection was sent down as a guidance, as a spiritual GPS of sort for the lost to be guided, for us to be guided back to Allah. And it's in that connection, that divine revelation, we sometimes forget Allah remembered the creation, the creator remembered the creation. So Allah remembered us and decreed that fasting for us was to be observed in remembrance of this. And what's the significance of fasting, on the other hand? The significance of fasting just earlier in the Quran, Allah reminds us that fasting is prescribed for us as it was prescribed to those who came before us, that we may be more mindful and conscious and remembering of Allah. So Ram Ramadan is a month in which we are, uh, are recognizing this fact that our creator remembered us, sent us a salvation and a month in which we too must now remember our creator. It's this divine communion that we come to the space of remembrance that the creator has remembered the creation and the creation remembers the creator. And we, we become cognizant that our creator has always remembered us. But in this space, uh, especially there's that connection and that intersection. 
So if our fasts and if our prayers have not cultivated this remembrance within us, let us remind ourselves before we break our next fast, before we pray our next prayer, why do we do these things? Omar radiallahu anhu had taught that hold on to your prayers, hold on to the salah, because if you lose that, then you lose everything. And what is the salah other than a conversation, a loved conversation, a devoted space to the creator? So remembering that, what is it, what, what do we lose? when we don't remember Allah, when we don't have Allah at the center of our attention and of our personal navigation, what, what do we lose? And it's tantamount to losing everything. So we ask ourselves in this space as well, when we do this remembrance, we ask ourselves as well, what is, how, our, how are our hearts? Do our hearts feel hard? Do they feel derelict? Or do they, do they feel like they, they're not content? How do they feel? You know, another story with Hassan al-Basri, a man came to him and said that, I complain to you of the hardness of my heart. And Hassan al-Basri had said that, discipline it with dhikr, discipline it with the remembrance of Allah. And we see that in the Quran, Allah has said that, verily in the remembrance of Allah, verily in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest and find peace. Uh, Shaykh ibn Taymiyyah also writes that remembrance of the heart uh, remembrance, sorry, remembrance of Allah for the hearts is like water for fish. And what will be the state of the fish when they are separated from water? So just thinking about this, this aspect, this metaphor that we don't realize it, but for our hearts, in a sense, for our hearts to be living, for our hearts to be thriving, our spiritual hearts to be in existence, to just be what they are and to be uh, alive needs that remembrance of Allah. Um, because if you take a fish out of water, how long will it last before it, uh, it, it loses its life? So thinking, what, what does it mean for us if we don't have that spiritual water, that spiritual remembrance running through us? Ibn al-Qayyim also wrote that for us to be mindful, be, be remembering of Allah, be remembering of why we are where we are, that when we stand, especially in prayer, when we stand body and posture and head face towards the Qibla, face towards Allah in prayer, how will we be when we feel that, when we realize our hearts are actually facing another way? What benefit will that bring to us? So first and foremost, we remember Allah. We are mindful of Allah. But we are mindful of the things that we do, that they're not just for any aimless purposes. Because our Prophet taught us that we can fast as much as we can, we can pray as much as we can, but there will still be those among us who fast and we get nothing but hunger, we pray and get nothing but tiredness and physical exhaustion. So we want to remember uh, because in that aspect, remembrance is a difference. It, it changes those rituals from just being what we perceive as burdens or just obstacles to things that are life-giving. Number two, we want to be humble with others and we want to be humble with ourselves. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah also wrote that I can constantly renew my Islam until this very day as to, uh, as to up to now. And I do not consider myself to have ever been a good Muslim. And this is somebody who, you know, however is perceived or under, understood uh, in many mainstream circles is a very kind of prominent or well-respected you know, scholar and not to, not to dismiss some of the writings that have been utilized or maybe have seen in maybe a more harmful tone um, or kind of mis distorted that are there. But for the context of who this person is, uh, seeing that even a person as devoted or as practicing in that space consistently wrote that even up to now, I don't consider myself a good Muslim, but I try to constantly renew my Islam until this very day. And what does our renewal look like? What does that space look like for us to just cultivate that humility that uh, we just because we're Muslim doesn't mean we've got it all taken care of. But what does it look like for us to tangibly say we've renewed our intentions? Our Prophet taught us that our deeds are by our intentions, our actions are by their motivations. What is our intention? In Surah Al-Furqan, Allah reminds us that this aspect of humility, to approach something with humility, is the first and foremost feature of what Allah has called Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the most merciful. Their first quality is Yamshuna al ardi Hawnan, that they walk upon the earth with humility. And when the people uh, chastise them, when people come and uh, say lewd things to them or harass them or hurt them or demean them, their response is peace. So thinking about this aspect of humility that we enter into the space with humbleness, we enter the space of humility, knowing that our day here may not be our day tomorrow. And we, we try our best to zone ourselves into this moment that we approach things with humility, 
uh, because we don't know that tomorrow is promised to us. And so what do we do with this aspect? Number two, practicing repentance. We often hear that there's this focus on the original sin, that humanity has fallen and we've, you know, humans started off by biting uh, of the forbidden fruit, uh, fruit and whatnot. But we don't think about, the as Islam lifts up, the original virtue, which is the repentance, the, the, uh, the tawbah that was made. Um, the Quran tells us that Allah is with those and loves those who repent, but then who also purify themselves. Ibn al-Qayyim says that sins are those which can cause a great deal of loneliness, and more sins, the more sins one uh, accrues and, and continues to participate in, the more loneliness they start to feel. And Islam's prescription for the removal of sins, so fascinating, is not isolation. It's actually divine communion. It's engaging in tawbah, it's engaging in repentance, going to your Lord, uh, because in going into that space and asking for forgiveness and doing these different things, it's not, it's not done out, uh, in an isolated space that no one is hearing or anything, but Allah is present in that space. Who are you giving repentance to? Who are you making repentance to? You're having that conversation with Allah. And so this aspect of repentance is also one that is not uh, a, a isolating or, or a factor that makes you even more alone. Uh, it's actually one that spiritually should make you feel held to, together with Allah. We've shared in the past that the fear of Allah or this taqwa, this aspect of being people who are mindful of Allah, in other aspects, it may make us, uh, when we're afraid of something, we run away with it or run away from it. And in the context of the fear that we think, talk about, that healthy fear, that awareness of Allah, in something that when we are afraid, we run back to Allah in these matters. And so not to let our sins and our mistakes define us, but to know that our faith offers a way for us to go beyond that, but to do so in a, uh, in, in a non-isolating manner. Number four, practice gratitude. So we want to center ourselves in this moment, and we want to find gratitude even in the most mundane things. We want to see that when we look how Ramadan is going in places like Palestine, or Al-Aqsa Mosque is being stormed and people who are worshiping are being detained, that we find ourselves grateful for the smallest things. And we find ourselves that even, you know, just in the most mundane things of just waking up, whatever it is, the smallest things, our iftar might not be a great iftar, so who might not be a great suhoor, but at least there was something there. Uh, Imam Shafi shares that to be, to be able to thank Allah, to be able to just give gratitude to Allah for a blessing is a blessing in and of itself. Um, and phrases that uh, our Prophet ﷺ taught that phrases that are light on the tongue but heavy on the scales are those which are remembering Allah. You know, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah wa That you you say these glor uh, glorifications to Allah that they are light on our tongues. It's easy for us to just say them, but they don't go to waste. They're counted at a space that's counted. And our Prophet ﷺ taught us that uh, in a hadith that whoever wakes up, just physically wakes up, is healthy, is safe, is secure has food for the day, um, it's as if that person has the entire world. They had, it's, a, it's the, as if that they've got everything that they need and more. Um, so they've got the whole world just by having those basic necessities. So ask yourself in this space, what are we grateful for? Are we grateful for just being able to have seen this much of Ramadan, to be able to get to this spot? Just asking ourselves of those things and being mindful of what we're grateful for. And lastly, we want to continue to do good, to be people who are doing good, but to do it consistently and moderately. Our, the Quran teaches us that what is the reward for goodness other than good? And Allah tells us that uh, in addition to being people who are mindful of their Lord, that those who do good in this world will have a good reward, and those who persevere patiently and consistently will be given a full and unstinting reward as well. So we want to be sure to be people who do good during this time, whether it's charity, whether it's removing a harmful object, whether it's just helping out someone in need, doing a good, even if it's small, because our process from Taz that even the best of deeds, the best of deeds are those that are done, they're done consistently, but even if they are small, they, that doesn't matter, that they are the ones that are just done and they're done regularly and with moderation and teaches us that if that hour were to come, if the final hour was to come, even if we had like a seed or a sapling in our hand to do what we could to just plant it, to do good, even in those moments where we might not feel like we could do anything else in that sense. So we, we lift that up, but also 
we sometimes feel like we get overburdened. We feel like there's so much we can do and we, we get a little bit overwhelmed. But our, our Prophet Sassam teaches us that through moderation, we will attain our goal. And he consistently emphasizes moderation, moderation, be moderate. Um, and that the religion of Islam is easy and no one makes it hard on themselves except that it will overwhelm them. So taking into account what are those actions that we can do that are small, um, they're, uh, they may feel insignificant, but they begin when we do them regularly, they start to not only make a difference in the world around us, but they start to make a difference within ourselves. So inshallah, wherever we might be at this time in Ramadan, may we use this opportunity to ground ourselves and to be able to change that which might, which might have felt like a plateau, it might feel like a downward trend since the start of Ramadan to something that is more akin to a positive trajectory. And may we, may we use this moment to reclaim our Ramadan. So let's be mindful that our time is fleeting. We're going to look back again next week and the week after and be like, where did Ramadan go? And within the next week, we're going to come into the ten, last blessed 10 nights of Ramadan. So wherever we are, Let's take a look at this aspect. Let's be mindful that this time is fleeting and it's going to continue to flee. If we thought the first half of Ramadan went by like this, we can guarantee the next half of Ramadan will also go by like that if we are in that same space. But if we ground ourselves, it, we, we can actually experience it moment by moment, hour by hour. And we want to take advantage to take these five things that we talked about to heart. So we take these five things to heart as we embark on this final half of the climb, as we get ready for the second half of this uh, of, of, of this um, uh, of this match of whatever you want to conceptualize it at, as, as depending on your context. But wherever you are at this halfway point, the next half that is remaining, we want to take advantage of these five things and center ourselves. So first and foremost, remember who you are. Remember whose you are, and remember why you are on this journey in the first place, and why Allah has said that this journey is taking place, why this game is taking place, why this match, whatever it is, why is this happening? Remember the purpose that we discussed, why Ramadan is here, why fasting is here, why those prayers are prescribed, all of that stuff. Remember, number two, be humble and be gentle with yourself as well as with those around you. Number three, be repentant, be often repenting, because Allah loves those who repent. Number four, be grateful. Be grateful for even the smallest little things that uh, we have, even the most mundane things. Be grateful for those things we take advantage, we, we take for granted, our eyesight, our uh, smallest blessings that are just, we feel are innate to us. And number five, be moderate, be consistent, and be a doer of good, positive person. And finally, place your hope, place your trust, place your goal, whatever it is, all the deeds and actions, don't do them for any worldly kind of purpose. Do it for Allah. Put it in uh, Allah's trust. Put it in that space for anything that we put to Allah and we put with Allah will surely never be lost and it'll never be left unacknowledged, especially when it counts most. So let us reclaim our Ramadan by first and foremost reclaiming ourselves and reclaiming our relationship with Allah and reclaiming what our Prophet ﷺ had sent us and what it truly means. And inshallah, we'll come to see ourselves at that summit of Ramadan and at many more summits to come and inshallah, at the ultimate summit where it counts the most with Allah and with those who have come before, who have blazed this trail for us, inshallah. I mean, uh, we pray to Allah to allow us to uh, bless for us these brief moments we've experienced in Ramadan, and to continue to bless the remainder of Ramadan even more so, and to make the remainder of this month easy for us to attain, to remind us of the reasons and the purpose for which we are to fast, for which we are to come into Ramadan, to not be anything more than that, just to become more aware, more conscious, and more mindful of Allah, to help us reset, repurify, and make our intentions pure for this month, to cleanse our hearts of any impurities, to cleanse our hands, our bodies, our physical and our spiritual selves of any wrongdoing uh, that, we've that we've done before, to polish that, and to be of those who have sound hearts, to guide us all to the right path, the path of whom Allah has bestowed favor, to be there for those who are going through Ramadan in isolation, to be there for those who are going through Ramadan in struggle and opposition and oppression and persecution, and to allow us to be folks who are uh, the liberators of these people, to allow us to be people who help those who are in need, to be with those who are unable to fast, to bless for those folks their deeds, their actions, and to enable those of us who can fast to be a source of benefit for them. And we ask Allah to make amends Help us make amends for any wrongs that we've committed, any harms that we've done to ourselves and to other people, and to make us those who are uh, the bringer of justice, the bringer of comfort to those who are coming in. 
And we ask Allah to make this Ramadan a cleansing, the remainder of this Ramadan a cleansing and a change in our spiritual and our worldly trajectories. Make this a month of forgiveness, mercy, and a reminder for where our true destination is and shall allow us to leave this Jummah, allow us to leave this Jummah better than we came to it and allow us to leave every day better and every place better than we had come and then we had entered it and allow us to leave this part of the journey ready to enter the summit at the next part and at a better state than we had come to at this part. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa salli ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima inna kamidu majeed. Ibad Allah rahmakum Allah inna Allah ya'mur inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wa lisan wa itaid al kurma wa yanha al fasha wa al minkar wa al baghi ya'idukum la'alikum tadakkurun wa Allah wa yadhukum wa yastajib lakum wa yadhukum Allah akbar. Rabbana taqabal minna inna ka anta sameel alim. Rabbana taqabal Allah. Pray that Allah accepts his humble service from us and accepts our service and our du'as and our sacrifice and know that inshallah, whatever Ramadan was before, it doesn't have to be what Ramadan is remaining. It can always change and it starts with this moment. Inshallah, praying for you all, praying for myself that we make this and make the most of this blessed occasion. Inshallah, ameen. Assalamu alaikum until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.